Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching Responsive Design Lesson 5 and in this video we're going to talk about media queries. Okay, so I've mentioned media queries in the previous lesson, so I just want to go over them in more depth now. Uh, essentially, what media queries do is allow us to create CSS rules based on various parameters. For example, uh, the viewport size or the screen size or the device type that you're viewing the website on. So the idea is, is that we can arrange our layout to suit a wide variety of different devices or screen sizes. For example, we could create a media query which targets just mobile screen sizes and we create a whole set of CSS rules that are going to target those screen sizes. Okay, so the layout's going to look different on mobile devices. The syntax is really easy. Okay. Um, what we would generally do is put media queries in our main style.css file or whichever CSS file you're using, or you may want to have different CSS files just for certain media queries or media types. I don't like to do that. I like to keep everything in one file together. So what we would generally do in the CSS is, first of all, declare that we're using a media query, and we do that by using the at symbol, first of all, and then say media, no spaces between those. And then we pass through a keyword, which is a media type, to say what kind of device we're going to be viewing on, and uh, or what type of device these CSS rules are going to be active on. Then we use the keyword and to attach an expression to it. And the expression could be anything. Well, not anything, but can be a variety of things. It could be things like the orientation of the device, or the width of the device, things like that. Okay, so we've got some examples here. And by the way, then we have our curly braces and all our styles go in there, which are going to target this thing right here. So for example, we've got two here. The first one, I'm declaring the media query right here. Then the media type I'm saying is TV. So I want these CSS rules to be viewed on TVs only, TV devices. And there's the keyword. I'm attaching this expression to it. I'm saying that it must have a minimum width of 1200 pixels. So I'm saying that I want to target TVs that have a minimum width of 1200 pixels. And for all those devices that fit into this media query, then apply the styles between here. Now there's nothing there at the minute, but generally in a CSS sheet, what would you uh, what you'd do is write a load of CSS rules that are just going to target TVs with this width, okay, or with this minimum width. Another example, I said media again to declare our media query. Then this time the media type is screen. So any device which has a screen that could be iPads or um, desktops or phones, whatever, anything with a screen, and we're attaching this expression to it, they have a maximum width of 800 pixels. So I'm going to write some rules within these two curly braces, which say, okay, apply these rules to all screens which have a maximum width of 800 pixels. So if the screen is bigger than 800 pixels, don't apply these rules. If it's 800 pixels or less, then you can apply these rules. So I'm targeting smaller devices, kind of like the uh, the iPad range, things like that. All right, so I just want to show you these media queries in action. Just a quick example, and I've got open here a website template that we made in another playlist that I've done here on YouTube, and uh, that playlist is PSD to WordPress, where we take a, a PSD file, then we create this HTML and CSS template, and we turn that into a WordPress theme. So what I'm going to be doing is using this CSS and HTML template that we created to demonstrate some different things when it comes to responsive design. And we're going to make this website responsive. I know I said we were going to make a website from scratch, but I thought just to teach you the core principles of responsive design, I'm going to use this one because we've already got some HTML and CSS ready made up. And then right after this tutorial playlist, I'll probably make another one where I'm going to make a completely new um, responsive website from scratch. Okay, so for the sake of this course, if you want to follow along, you can head over to my GitHub page where I've uploaded all the HTML and CSS and images for this template. So you can go to here, this address at the top. I'll leave the link down below in the description so you can go there and then just click download zip and it's going to download all the files for you to view this in your browser. And it's going to look something like this when you open it up in a text editor. This text editor is brackets. You can get it from brackets.io. So if you open it up in here, you're going to have access to the index file, the style.css file, and all the images ready-made. So we can start making this responsive. Okay. Incidentally, if you want to start this from scratch, I'll leave a link to the PSD to WordPress tutorial series down there, and you can go through how I make this uh, HTML and CSS template from scratch. Otherwise, just follow along from here. Okay. So I just want to demonstrate these media queries 
in action. So I'm going to right click and go to inspect and I'm in Google Chrome here by the way and then what I'm going to do is go to sources that's going to bring up the style.css file right here so I can see all that and what I would typically do is do all of my desktop styles at the top like this okay and then I would come down here and when I've done all the desktop styles I'll make a little comment in the CSS and I'll say something like this media queries okay and all my media queries are going to go below here so the first one I'm going to do I'm going to say at media that's just to declare that we're using a media query then I'm going to say all screen devices that's the device type then I use the keyword and and I'll attach an expression to it and the max width and I'm going to put 700 pixels okay and then what I can do is start making some CSS rules within here and those CSS rules are only going to be targeted towards screens which have a maximum width of 700 pixels. So if the viewport is bigger than 700 pixels, it's going to ignore these styles that I place in here. If it's 700 pixels or less and it's being viewed on a screen, then it's going to action them. OK, so what are we currently at the minute? We're currently at about 900 pixels here in the viewport. You can see this little ruler at the top. So let's just create a rule. Let's grab the footer which is this thing down here, and it's currently gray, but when it gets to 700 pixels, I want the footer background to be red, okay? So currently we're at 900, and the footer background is, if we find the rule, this color right here, which is a deep gray. But when it gets to 700 pixels, the um, viewport right here, then I want it to change to red. So let's just zoom this over to the left a little bit until we reach 700 pixels, and watch the footer, boom. There we go, now it's red. So now that it sees that the viewport is 700 pixels and less, and it is on a screen, it's applying the styles, okay? Anything within this kind of code block here. Now typically, we're not gonna start changing the colors of our footers just for um, kind of mobile devices or tablets or things like that. We would do more positional things to make it fit better and to give more space and make it easier to scroll around and use on a mobile. Okay, so we'll do something a little bit different. We'll take that off. You'll notice it jumps back to gray, uh, to gray now and we'll take it out a little bit. And what I wanna do is change it so that these here, because as you get a little bit smaller like this, they start to look, look a little squashed, sorry. And uh, what I wanna do is take them and have two and then another two under them, okay? So let's inspect the element and find out what they are. It's these li tags right here. You can see they've got these rules applied to them in the style.css right here. So I'm gonna copy that and you can see currently they've got a width of 23 pixels. Uh, not 23 pixels, 23%. So we've got each one having a 23% width. Now, when it gets to 700 pixels in width, the viewport, I wanna change that. So I'm gonna paste that rule right there and then I'm gonna set the width equal to 46%, which is twice as big. Okay, and now you can see we have two to a row like that. So over 700 pixels, it's four to a row. Less than 700 pixels or 700 pixels and less, it's two to a row, okay? And we can take this one step further. We can make another media query. Let's copy that, come down here. And this time we'll say less than 500 or less than 400, and that's gonna, target most mobile devices because most mobiles have a width of around 400 pixels or thereabouts and this time what I want to do is make the width of each one of these 92% okay so it's going to be one to each row so let's have a look let's go to 400 pixels and then boom there we go so each one of those now has a width of 92% it's taking up most of the width of the page except for these little gaps right here so yeah that is how media queries work. And one more little thing, whenever we hit a media query, so right now it's just applying all these styles upwards of here because we're at 800 and something pixels, but when it gets to 700 pixels and applies that media query, we call this point here at 700 pixels, we call that a break point because that's the point where the design breaks a little bit and new designs or new styles are applied, okay? And by the way, this rule, 46%, is being applied here because it's below the rule up here, okay? Remember, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and that means it runs from top to bottom. So rules that are at the bottom override rules that are at the top, okay? So that's how media queries and breakpoints 
work, my friends. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next video where we're going to start making this website more responsive and we're going to dive into this code and change it up a little bit. I'll see you guys then.